All right, folks, what's happening? This is the droid you're looking for. Got a little thought experiment for you to start the night off. What are you looking at here? I'll give you a second to think about it. Okay. What are you looking at now? I'll give you another three seconds to think about it. You have a salt with a deadly weapon. Now if you're laughing or if you're not, that's really beside the point. But that's just about as ridiculous as this gun control crap that we're going through. Two inanimate objects by themselves it's just a funny joke. A way of explain, explaining the absurd with the absurd. Just like my 12 year old told me today. A gun sitting on a counter all by itself isn't going to shoot somebody. Okay, I'll get off my soapbox now. That is kind of funny though, huh? Salt, a deadly weapon. Anyway, I digress. Today is actually about... Oh, knives. After we get some gun stuff out of the way. Okay. Give you a little backstory here. My uncle recently got back from uh, his last tour in, or my cousin I should say, just got back from his last tour in uh, Afghanistan. He had one tour in Afghanistan and one tour in Iraq. And his father actually had two tours in Iraq. Uh, funny thing about some of the things that goes on over there is because of the way they, the military does procurement and whatnot, they get big groups of quality things, um, but in some cases can't bring them back, and most of the time they're not used. So all you knife people out there could sit back and drool at the thought of a case of a thousand benchmades, or 500 say, uh, still in box, shipped over to Sandland, and those boxes, maybe half of them being used, and the other half being stuck in limbo, never having been opened, never having been deployed, so to speak, in combat. Those cannot come back to America. They have not been used. They are uh, very expensive knives. Most benchmades that I know are well over $100, and they've been issued by the military to the troops problem is they can't get them back. So they are literally destroyed over there rather than uh, some stupid international law gets bent and they get them back uh, over to the states and even sold at a, a discounted price. How many of you, where are you, you knife freaks who I think you probably are if you're listening to this still, like me, would love to get your hands on those at a discounted price. Yet another idea or example of our government's complete and utter inefficiency. Okay, once again my rant's over. One more thing. This is the first knife. This is in Ontario. Rat 1. Very nice blade. Aus 8. I've had it for over six months. I use it. I hard use it. And I don't know if you can still. I don't know if you can tell by looking at that blade. Come on, get a focus. Get a focus. It is still a sharp, darn blade. I have not touched it up at all, and it's still. I mean, it still cuts through uh, phone book paper nicely, and it's thick. I mean, it's a good stock. Uh, it's on a good platform. No forward or lateral play at all. The scales are kind of cheesy. I'm not a big fan of the scales. Scales on here, and they could have uh, they could have milled that out a bit, skeletonized the uh, the liners. But that's beside the point. The bigger thing is this is a thirty dollar knife for the most part. Anywhere between thirty and thirty eight dollars shipped. Okay. So it retails for something astronomical like seventy nine. And let me get that smudge off there for you. But you can get it in your hand, less than $40. Very nice knife. Tactical blade, long enough to be. Good in hand, the choil down here is nice, functional. Jimping is uh, okay, not excellent, but does its job up top. So, Ontario, that's an Ontario knife. The next one, this is an Ontario XM1. 
Need that little stamp right there. Yes, combat deployed. This one was combat deployed. I don't know that all of them do that are sold over here in the States, but this one was. This just got back from Af Afghanistan. And you've seen the battle damage. Just wait till I open it up. I don't know if you can see that. That's right there how you can tell it's got the aluminum scales underneath. It's got a really nice grisp, uh, grippy texture on the outside. But holy cow, look at how thick that is. That's my thumb. And I've got like huge fat th thumbs. And this side view of this just dwarfs that totally. I'll give you another example. This is the rather large Rat 1. And it's twice that size. Here, give me an another example. The Tenacious by Spider Co which is kind of a narrow knife. It's a third the size, you know, as far as width. And I know anything that they're going to be putting into, into combat, they're going to they're overbuild it, you know, I understand that. Under, under, or overbuild it to the max. Now, let me give you a take a look at this here. You can see how tore up this blade is. Look at all that tooth has not been properly sharpened yet. This sucker was part of a motor pool. Uh, I was told by my cousin that this was used many times to uh, pry wheel from such tire or tire from such wheel and with any regard at all to this knife which to me seems blasphemous just because it's wait for it a $180 knife But hey, the government's buying it, right? I think I still probably would have bought a beater like this, tore the crap out of it, and then tried to find a way to uh, show this is being used and get it back to the States with me. It's a beautiful knife. It really is. Uh, the blade material is the N690 out of, out of Italy. Italy builds these knives. Um, it's got a really nice backspacer here that gives the company logo. Ontario Knife Company. Now that's not in Ontario down in LA. It's not Ontario, Canada. This is actually Ontario in upstate New York. So this is an all US made knife uh, with the exception of, or you all US company knife and I believe it's assembled in Italy. That's that N690 Italy steel. So either they ship the steel over here and, and we assemble it or what the deal is, but it is a Oh, I took the clip off when I was messing, messing with it the, a couple minutes ago. Anyway, I'll show you where the, the, the clip placement is on there. What I did was I had to take it apart because it had some wicked rattle from being used as a pry. Okay, there's still a little bit there. None, side to side. It's almost rock solid side to side. But I had to play a little bit with the... Uh, right there where the lockup is. Um, it, that's my criticism of this nice knife, and that's where I'm going to end on. Uh, it basically has the same liners as a $40 knife. And to be honest with you, looking at it, the liners look thicker in the cheaper knife. That might just be coloring. Uh, I'm not sure. But this is bulletproof lockup. And granted, this is not being used to pry wheels and lug nuts and stuff off, uh, you know, beat up vans and trucks that have been blown up by IEDs, nothing like that. But this thing's locked up great. You can see the lockup's about, I don't know, about 60% after having been used. Let's see, yeah, about about 55% lockup on this one. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, since I fiddled with it, it's now at about 25. But... It was lower in there. I've kind of messed with the groove at the file a little bit, hoping, hoping that that fixes the problem. Anyway, let's see, another couple things. Even after jacking it up left and right, blade centering is absolutely dead on. Dead on blade centering. After prying, after beating it up, after you name it. I don't know. For $180, I can think of many, many other knives that I would rather buy. This thing is time tested. This thing's got character. This thing isn't going anywhere. Anyway, that's all I got for tonight. I hope you guys enjoyed that. You still can pick these up on Amazon. 
or eBay for cheap, uh, cheaper than the $180 uh, retail, uh, suggested retail. I think the cheapest I found in the camo one was like $110, but you can also, if you don't like this whole uh, military getup, you can get a sandblasted, um, same type, type of steel, the N690 blade, or a brush blade with black aluminum scales. So, and that's what those are, aluminum scales with that coating over the top of them. 6.9 ounces, so it's it's a beast. It's a heavy. It could do the job from the backside. Enjoy your knives, people, because when they're done with guns, they're coming after knives next. All right. God bless. Peace out. Have a good night.